everybody. So it's Sunday morning and that means it's family breakfast day. And by far the family breakfast item that is the most requested in this house is keto bread. Now the keto bread recipe that we use was actually developed by Matt and Mega of Keto Connect. Now, if you're watching this channel, you've probably already heard of them. They're by far one of the biggest channels in the keto space. But if by some off chance you haven't, definitely check them out. They've got a ton of recipes and resources for people that are just starting out on their keto journey. So their recipe is pretty amazing. And to be honest, everybody in this household loves it as is. But for me, it tastes a little bit eggy. And so I've been toying around with a couple of alternatives. And I think I found one ingredient substitution that tweaks the flavor profile just a little bit and also helps to change the macro profile so that it has a little bit more fat and a little bit less protein. One of the biggest challenges for me on this diet is consuming enough fat to get over that 70% threshold. So this totally helps. So we've gotten into the habit of making two loaves of keto bread every weekend. That way we always have some on hand for lunches and dinners and just snacks throughout the week. And so this weekend I'm gonna make two loaves. I'm gonna make one standard loaf, Keto Connect style, and I'm gonna make one loaf with my ingredient substitution and then we'll see what the family thinks about it. Now, like I said, the Keto Connect recipe is the incumbent and everybody loves it already. So I'm not really sure about my chances, but there's only one way to find out. Okay, so let's start with the ingredients. So we've got a cup and a half of almond flour. We have four tablespoons of butter that we're gonna melt down and incorporate into the mix a little bit later on. We've got six eggs with the whites and the yolks separated. This is very important because later in the recipe, we're going to whisk up those whites to a frothy, stiff peak consistency. Then we've got three teaspoons of baking powder, a pinch of Himalayan sea salt, I used about half a teaspoon, and about a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. We're gonna add that cream of tartar to the egg whites to help us achieve those stiff peaks that we're looking for. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Now this recipe is pretty simple, but really the hardest part is separating those whites from those yolks and doing it cleanly so that you can achieve those stiff peaks. If even a little bit of those yolks gets into your whites, you're gonna have a hard time achieving the stiff peak consistency. So I think I did a pretty good job here. So I'm gonna take the egg whites and put them into a large stainless steel mixing bowl. And then I'm gonna get my hand mixer and whip the crap out of these things. Now, if you're an absolute Hulk and you've got four arms of steel, you can try to use a whisk, but take it from me, that takes forever. So definitely save yourself some hassle and use a hand mixer if you've got one. In fact, if you don't got one, go out and buy one because it'll make your life a whole lot easier. Once we've achieved that stiff peak consistency, we're gonna go ahead and start folding in all the ingredients. So take the egg yolks and the melted butter and take the rest of your dry ingredients and throw them in a bowl. I'd recommend mixing them with a spatula so that you're folding in the ingredients nicely and lightly. This recipe is all about air and making sure that you've got a nice airy mixture. And so you wanna make sure not to over incorporate the ingredients. So once you've got a nice rough wet mixture, you're gonna go ahead and softly begin to fold in the egg whites, just one spatula at a time. And go ahead and mix it down until you get something homogenous without any dark spots. Once you've got a mixture that looks something like this, go ahead and pour it in your bread pan. Now I just gotta take a second to geek out about these bread pans. These bread pans are by far the best bread pans I've ever used. They're made by a company called USA Pan. They have a line that they make specifically for Sir Lata, but you can find them on Amazon. And they are so heavy duty. I mean, seriously guys, these things are built like a tank. And not only will you have them forever, but they're extremely non-stick. I've never had an issue with anything that I've made in these pans sticking to the sides. But nonetheless, we'll go ahead and butter down the sides and the bottom just for good measure and we'll go ahead and pour the mixture straight into that bread pan. Then we'll stick it into the oven at 375 for 30 minutes. Now my alternative basically is exactly the same, except instead of dealing with the egg whites, I use three quarters of a cup of heavy cream and I whip it to a whipped cream-like consistency. My hypothesis is, is that gives me the airiness that I'm looking for, but it ups the fat content of the bread just a little bit. And in my opinion, the structural integrity of the whipped cream is a little bit more dense than the egg whites. And so hopefully things will hold together at least equally well, if not just a little bit better. And hopefully it'll change the flavor profile enough 
to where I can't really get as much of an eggy aftertaste. All right, so we're gonna throw in my alternative loaf in the oven for the same period of time. And in a little bit, we'll check in and see how we're doing. All right, guys, so it's been about 30 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and check on the bread and we'll see how our challengers are doing. Now these look pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and invert my pan and you'll see how the bread just falls out of there really nicely without any trouble. And you'll know that your bread is done if you tap on the bottom and you get a sound that is pretty hollow sounding. Now these sound pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them on a cooling rack and I'm gonna let them sit and cool for at least 10 minutes. Then it'll be time to slice them open and see if the reigning champ still reigns. Okay, so both loaves of bread are now out of the oven. And right off the bat, I've gotta tell you that the Keto Connect recipe looks a lot more like bread. It got a really nice rise out of it and it's really light and fluffy and airy. By contrast, my recipe is a lot denser and a lot more like cake. There's very crumbly coming out of the pan and slicing it, you had to be really delicate. So it doesn't quite hold together as well as the Keto Connect bread. But let's go ahead and taste what we've got here. So let's try Keto Connect's bread first. So you can see it's very spongy, very light, very airy. Beautiful piece of bread. I've put some Kerrygold butter on the top. Gonna take a bite. There's a reason why every keto bread recipe on the internet rips off of this recipe. This recipe is fantastic. The mouthfeel definitely tastes like real bread. It toasts up really nice, and it's just a great carrying mechanism for that Kerrygold butter. Now we're gonna try the bread with my modifications. Wow, so I know it's more difficult to handle, but the cakier consistency of this bread just makes it disintegrate in your mouth. I kind of prefer the taste of this bread. It's rich and soft, and the butter just kind of dissolves into the overall bread, but not great for sandwiches in its current state. I'm gonna have to give this one another try. All right, so Keto Connect bread first, so let's give it a try. It's really good. It definitely has that texture of bread going for it. It's definitely the consistency of a normal bread. All right, so this is the next one. I definitely prefer the flavor. I feel like you get a lot more butter flavor with this bread, but again, it's not gonna hold up. It is definitely more of a cake texture. Flavor-wise, this is killer. All right, Luke, you wanna help us with the taste test? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so we're gonna feed you one piece of keto bread. Is Go this, ahead. That's option awesome. one. Mm. Buttery. That's pretty good. All right, should we try the next one? Mm-hmm. All right. Open up. Mm. Mm. That one's definitely more butter, butterier, and I think I like the second one that you just fed me. You like the second one the best? I like the, the first one, too. The second one is Daddy's Experimental Bread. Ooh. <laughs> Can you have more? Yes. Hey, what's up guys, it's me again. So I'm back because I could not let that bread challenge end the way that it did. My family completely demolished that experimental loaf of bread that we made earlier today. So I thought it was time to go back to the drawing board to see if I could perfect the recipe and come up with something that held together just a little bit better. And I think I'm onto something. This slightly modified recipe is a lot more dense and a lot more stable than the last recipe. It's definitely dense enough to use for sandwiches and to make toast out of. So the trick was we added a little bit more almond flour and we decided to keep all six egg whites into the final mixture. And we also incorporated a cup of heavy whipping cream that was fully whipped until it was light and airy. The result was a loaf of bread that's significantly taller than the standard recipe, but also a lot more calorie dense. So if you're gonna make this recipe, you should definitely make sure that you cut yourself thinner slices. That being said, the macros on this are pretty incredible. They're about 80% fat, 12% protein, and 8% carbs. If you factor in net carbs, it's only about 2.3 net carbs per serving. It has all of the richness and luxuriousness of the bread that we went bonkers over earlier. Now that being said, I think it might serve better as a base for a loaf cake. And so Monica can't wait to get her hands on this recipe and see if she can make some kind of pound cake out of it. What is this, take two? I want to eat all of that. Wow. I definitely like the consistency of this better. It holds up a lot more than the other one we tried. It's very flavorful and really moist on the inside, but also I can totally see this being the perfect keto like loaf. I can see blueberries or lemon poppy seed or something in that vein. Ready? All right, Ellie. Let's 
try. You like it? Hmm? What? More. What's it more? Yummy in the tummy. <laughs> Yummy in the tummy? Mm -hmm. Which one? This one? A big one. A big one. Okay, here. Oh my oh goodness. My That's a big one, Dad. <laughs> you good? <laughs>